He's back. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thanks for getting us started on a really happy, light note this morning. Good morning. Good to see all of you this morning. It is good to gather together in our Father's house. I wanted to start off so that I don't forget um, by just saying thank you to each one of you and thank you to uh, Reverend Lee Ellison for filling in for me last Sunday. Uh, I understand he did an excellent job. In fact, I know he did because I was watching and listening uh, last Sunday, not during the service, but later on. Uh, and all of those nice things that he said about me, I didn't write any of those. So, so Lee, I'm thinking of, I'm coming back with something, but I'm not sure what yet. So, But thank you all for, for uh, welcoming Lee and for making him feel very much at home. He really enjoyed his time here. I got a great, uh, a great email from him Sunday afternoon, and he was just so happy to be here with you all. And I made him promise that he would come back and visit with us again. So we can look forward to that. All right. If you would, join me in our life verse for September from 1 Peter chapter 5. Let's read verse 10 together. And the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. We're continuing to receive gifts uh, in support of the Alma Hunt offering for Virginia Missions. Um, I wanted to make sure that you all understand that this is a very important time, a very important month, and a very important uh, offering, especially this year, because a great deal of our state was affected by the recent storms and floods that we've had. And a lot of that Alma Hunt offering uh, contributions that you make go toward helping those folks who are very much in need right now. Um, there are still some offering envelopes and some uh, uh, information packets on the back table. If you would like to make a gift for the, uh, toward that offering, we have this Sunday and next Sunday. Next Sunday will be the final Sunday that we'll collect for the Alma Hunt offering. Wednesday night Bible study, we will continue our study of the book of Hebrews. Class will start at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Uh, it's not too late to come and join us. If you'd like to do that, check with Debbie or myself, and we will get you some more information on that. Um, just a quick reminder that the women's Bible study will meet here in the sanctuary this Tuesday uh, at noon, and they are continuing their study of the biblical patriarchs. Um, check with Katie if you need more information on that. I believe they're still bringing bag lunch. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's how that's going. If I'm wrong, sorry, but I, I think that's how that's working. Um, also excited that we were able to start up the golden years again last, last week. I wish I could have been here to join you, but I understand we had a great turnout and everyone had a good time. So I look forward to that uh, come October. I think that's about all I've got for you for right now. Let's, let's go ahead and start our time of worship with this word of prayer. Father God, through Jesus, you call us to follow. And so we have once again gathered here to hear your holy word proclaimed. As we humbly come into your presence, may our hearts and our minds be open to receive that which you offer to us. In return, may our prayers and our praises be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. These things we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Good morning, y'all. If you can stand as you're able to sing day by day, you'll see the lyrics here on the overhead. To love thee more dearly, 
to follow thee more nearly day by day, day by day, day by day. Oh, dear Lord, three things I pray to see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly. To follow thee more nearly, day by day, day by day, day by day. Oh, dear Lord, three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly. To follow thee more nearly, day by day, day by day, by day, by day, by day. Please be seated. And Victor, I failed to, but I wanted to mention, mention I wanted to say thank you for filling in for Tony while he was gone. He did an awesome job, and we so, so appreciate all of your talents and all of your gifts and your willingness to share them with us. So thank you. Yeah. Sir. Can I just say Absolutely, but you, you take the microphone from Victor. Keep in mind, keep in mind, Tony, one of the reasons he is doing so well and growing so well is because of your mentoring for him. And I know Victor appreciates that. And, and I mean, we're the winners. We're, we're, we, get, we get the blessings because of y'all's willingness to work together. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I, I don't say thank you enough, but I, I want to say it now. During our time of morning prayer, I'd ask you to continue to pray for our church, for our church family, um, for our ministries as we continue to move out of the COVID and into um, new opportunities to reach out to the community around us. Pray for those who are on our prayer lists. Uh, continue to pray for Patty as she grieves Frank's passing. Pray for that family. There's an awful lot of decisions and an awful lot of things that have to, uh, have to happen now. And there's going to be a lot of changes, so please continue to pray for Patty and her family. Pray for June Hodge. As you all know, she lost her sister this week, and we would like to keep her in our prayers as well. Pray for all of our leaders, our local, our national, our world leaders. You know, I made a vow last week when we, when we left to go on vacation that I would not watch the news this week. And I kept that vow. I did not watch the news. I did not listen to the news. Yeah, I looked at Facebook every once in a while just to make sure that y'all were behaving yourselves, but... Um, we didn't watch any news. In fact, there was only three nights that we actually even turned the TV on. And we watched reruns of Andy Griffith and Gomer Pyle. And I thought, you know, if we could ever get back to a simpler life, that, that, would, be, that would be ideal. Now, the fact that we were able to spend a lot of time literally standing there watching God's glory every time a wave broke, every time we caught a fish, and which, by the way, we caught a lot of fish. But we caught a lot of them, and we put them all back. We gave them, put them right back where they belonged so that maybe next year they can be 
But there's something about being at the waterside and ridding ourselves of all the garbage that goes in here and just thanking God for every moment. I, and, you know, we don't have to go far to do that. We can do that in our own backyards. We can do that in our own homes. But we have to be willing to shut out everything else and just spend time with God. And that's why I really look forward to us going on vacation. We don't do any wild trips. We're, we're, we're too old for that. Well, at least I am. She may not be, but I am. But what we do is we just take some time to try to recharge our batteries. And uh, uh, it worked. It worked. So take that time. Take that time for yourself. Don't wait to go on vacation. Take that time every day. And, and, and the best way I know how to do that is with what we're going to do right now. And that's have a conversation with your Heavenly Father. So let's go to the Lord now in a time of, of silent prayer and th give thanks to him. Praise his holy name. Let's worship the Lord together. blessings. Father God, this morning we come before you in the words of the hymn and we come before you to count our many blessings. Father, we don't take enough time. We don't put the effort into stopping and giving you thanks for all of the many blessings that you have given to us. So right here, right now, this morning, Lord, I pray that we will each take a moment and just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for family, for friends, for our church, for our nation, and for our world. It's, it's messed up, Lord, we know that, but we also know that you have given us the power and the authority to fix it. So this morning, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers, hear our praises, guide and direct us in our thoughts and in our actions. These things we pray to you this morning. Lord God, your holy word instructs us that if we will cry out to you in our times of trouble, your word says that you will deliver us and that we, in turn, shall respond by glorifying you. Today, Lord God, we ask you to hear the cries of your people as we seek an end to the turmoil and the violence that threatens to destroy our nation, our world, our families. We grow, we grow weary each day of the headlines and the news. We're tired of the lack of care and compassion 
that is being exhibited in the lives of so many people today. Lord God, we pray for an end to injustice and indifference. And we realize that peace and understanding and tolerance begins with each one of us, your children. We also know that in spite of all that is wrong in our world, Creator God, we know by faith that you are and always have been and always will be in control and that no forces of evil or wickedness can defeat you. Father, 2,000 years ago, you put on flesh and you walked among us to show us that decency and respect for one another was not only possible but necessary if we are to survive as a human race. You walked our paths, you saw our struggles, you felt our pains, yet you did not allow yourself to get caught up in the neg negativity. Instead, you showed us how to have humility. Humility, even as you sought to bring about change. You reminded us that a future without faith is no future at all. So this morning we ask you to show us once again, Sovereign Lord, how to bring hope to those who have lost all hope and light to those who dwell in darkness. Strengthen us and build us up, we pray, that we may be about the work that you would have us to do so that you can and will be glorified in all things. We pray this morning, Heavenly King, for our leaders on every level, starting with our church, our country, our state, our nation, and our world. We ask you, Father, to give all of our leaders your direction that they may follow your will and not their own agendas. Instill in our hearts the courage to stand for what is right and good, even if we stand alone. May we never forget that it is not this world that is our home, but may we continue to bring your kingdom here, just as it is in heaven. closer to home, great healer, we continue to pray for our church and our church family, especially those who are experiencing illness, injury, separation, and grief. Remembering especially those on our prayer list and the ones whom we hold dear to our hearts. Lord God, we ask you to pour out your healing upon each one of them and upon each one of us. For surely all are carrying a load that is at times more than we think we can bear. Remind us that we as the body of Christ have the responsibility to bear with one another. In the end that one day we will all rejoice together as well. And now we pray come Holy Spirit. Come to us with the same power and guidance that you rained down on the early church. Free us from those things that keep us from doing your will in our lives. These and all prayers we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we lift our hearts and our voices together, praying as he taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If y'all can stand as you're able to sing number 202.
All hail the power of Jesus' name, all verses. from Mark 8, verses 27 through 30. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea and Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for us to have the knowledge, the power, and the faith to realize that you are our Savior. We thank you for that power and faith, dear Lord. You are who we lean on. You are who we rely on, dear Father. And dear Lord, please give us the power every day to make sure all those around us and who we come in contact with understand who we are on this earth to proclaim and follow. Please forgive us of our sins, dear Father, and in all things we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
You guys just keep going. I'm, I'm just going to sit here. Oh, that was beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm. It's mellow, okay? The word mellow just comes to mind. Hey, Grayson, thank you for helping Aunt Debbie this morning. I appreciate it. I wanted to make sure I said something to you. I want you to consider for just a moment how many different names and or titles you have. Think about that for just a moment. We have Piano Man. You guys call him Tony. I call him Piano Man. We have the man with the golden horn. Y'all call him Victor. We have grandmas. We have grandpas. We have moms and dads. Uh, if you're like me and your given name is not what you're called on a regular basis, okay? When I was born, I was named William. And the only time I hear William now is if I'm in trouble. I was at the doctor's office a few weeks ago for a scheduled appointment, and the, you know, the waiting rooms are huge, and of course they space you out now. And I didn't have my hearing aids in, don't ask me why, either I forgot them or I just didn't feel like putting them in. And I kept hearing this woman call, William, William. And I'm looking around, and William's not getting up. And I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I'll get bumped up a little bit. And then finally she goes, William, do, 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 uh, do um, and I went, oh, okay, that's me. <laughs> okay. Um, so when I was born, I was William. And then for a long time, I was, oh, hated this one, I was Billy. Hated that. I didn't hate it when I was this big. When I was this big, I hated it. And when my voice changed, I really hated it, but that's beside the point. And for the last 20 plus years, I've been Pastor Bill. That's my favorite. That's, that's absolutely my favorite. But how about you? What are you called? What names, what, no, I don't mean those names. You know what I'm talking about. What are the nice names that you're called? <laughs> depending on who's speaking to you, depending on the situation, you're probably known by a lot of different things. You're known either by what your occupation is or what it maybe it used to be. Um, there's just so many different titles. So many different names that each one of us have. And you know, Jesus was the same way. Jesus was the same as you and I. So this morning, I want you to consider how many different names or titles we have for Jesus in our Bibles. According to one source, there are over 150 different names or titles for Jesus in God's holy word. Another source says the number is over 200. And he actually listed where, scripturally, where each one of those 200 titles are. And I'm going to go over all of them for you this morning. No, I'm not. I promise. I promise. But there are several that I want to highlight and I want us to consider two very important questions. The first one is, what do you call Jesus? What do you call Jesus? I'm thinking maybe some of the, one of the best ways to break down all of these different titles and names uh, 
is to, to break them down into three general categories. The first one starting with his nature. The nature of Jesus. One of the most well-known prophetic writings comes from the prophet Isaiah. And it's one that's very familiar to all of you. And it, it mentions several different titles. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and this one, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. While this is a very comforting title, as I've talked about before, when we use the word peace in this context, it's not about the absence of conflict in the world, but it's about the presence of God in the midst of mankind's hearts. See, the Prince of Peace came so that our sins would be forgiven and also so that we could be reconciled with God. And when it comes to our Lord's nature, in the Old Testament, we find another title for Jesus in the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 13, where he's referred to as the Son of Man. The Son of Man. This reference is only found a total of four times in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, it is seen, it is read 88 times, most of all by Jesus himself. He referred to himself most of all as the Son of Man. And this is true, right? Because Jesus was the human son of a human man. His father's name was what? Tell me. Joseph. But think about it. Jesus is the one who called himself more than anyone else. Jesus is the one who referred to himself as the Son of Man. This is a sign of his humility, as well as the fulfillment of the ancient prophecy. Jesus could have, maybe should have, flaunted his relationship to his heavenly father, but he didn't. He chose to be humble. It was important to Jesus that people saw him as just a regular guy. How many of you have ever been in the presence of somebody famous? I mean, a celebrity kind of famous. How many of you? Somebody famous. It's a little unnerving, isn't it, Paula? You know, when, when, when you're standing next to somebody, okay, so I was 12 years old, somewhere around there. Maybe early teens, but somewhere in that age. And I stood directly in front of, now some of you may not even know who this is, but it was important to me. I stood this close and talked with Elston Howard. Does anybody know who Elston Howard was? Yeah, I knew, I, I knew y'all would know. I knew y'all. Elston Howard was this giant of a man, well, especially when you're 12 years old, who played catcher for the New York Yankees for many, many years, including several World Series championships. And there I was, standing at his front door at his house, with my best friend Chris, because he was a lot braver than me. And we were getting his autograph. It, we, we had a snow day. I was spending the night at Chris's house, because that's what you did when there were snow days. You don't want to stay home. You went and stayed with a friend. And Chris had found out that Elston Howard lived about a mile away from him. So that morning, we decided we were going to put on our, our boots and our heavy coats and our hats and our mittens and everything else, and we were going to walk to Elston Howard's house. And we and let me tell you something, we were, we were ready. We're going to go meet Elston Howard. 
We're even going to ask him for an autograph. We had little cards in our hands. We were going to ask him for, and, and we were, and boy, we were brave walking down the street. We we're going to meet Elston Howard. Boy, we were going to, you know, and everybody in school was just going to go, you met Elston? And we were going to go, yep, we sure did. And we got to the door and we rang the doorbell and this little kid about our age came to the door and went, huh? And we went, uh, 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 is your daddy Elston Howard? And he went, yeah. I went, could, could, could we talk? And with that, the door opens up, and I mean, this giant of a man is standing there. And he says, what can I do for you boys? Um, uh, oh, can we have your order? He was so nice. Invited us in, signed the paper for us. I mean, just as nice as he could be. It's a little unnerving when you meet somebody who is to you a celebrity. Jesus didn't want people to meet him like that. Jesus wanted people to see him as just, just one of the guys, just someone who could help them, someone who wanted to be their friend, someone who wanted to serve them, who wanted to take care of them, who wanted to be one of them. Paul wrote about Jesus in Philippians chapter 2. Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, he was in nature God, did not consider equality with God to be used to his own advantage. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. I don't think I showed more than four or five other people that I had Elson Howard's autograph. I wish I still had it today. Lord only knows where it is now. Because, first of all, I didn't think anybody would believe me. I didn't think they believed that we actually walked to Elston Howard's house in a snowstorm and got his autograph. But then I thought also, this was something special. And I will guarantee you that every person who had the opportunity to meet Jesus when he walked on earth felt the same way. Another often seen reference to Jesus and his nature is one that came to a young pregnant girl, a virgin, who received this message from an angel sent by God, an angel by the name of Gabriel. According to the first chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, the angel said to this frightened girl, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. The Son of God. This affirmation of Jesus is repeated over 40 times in the New Testament. This affirmation of his nature. He's also referred to in the New Testament as the Holy One. The judge of the living and the dead, the chief cornerstone, the light of the world, the king of kings and lord of lords, the word and the word of God. Second category of names I would like to look at this morning come from Jesus' work here on earth. And one of my favorites uh, of, of all of the titles for Jesus falls into this category, the good shepherd. The Good Shepherd. Every single one of us knows that painting, and I don't know who the artist is, but every single one of us knows that painting of Jesus with the sheep on his shoulders. The sheep that had fallen into a crevice, and Jesus had reached down with the hook on the shepherd's crook and lifted that sheep out of the crevice. That was the one sheep out of the hundred the 99 were there, they were safe, but the one that had fallen. And that was the one that he rescued and put over his shoulders and carried to safety. In the Gospel according to John chapter 10, Jesus said of himself, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now I know I've talked about this in the past, but in biblical times, the, the, the occupation, if you will, of being a shepherd was somewhere down around 
here. And if my knees would work, it would be even lower. Shepherd was one of the lowest forms of livelihood. It was usually left for the young boys, the young males, or those that had some sort of um, uh, disability and were unable to do any other type of labor. But the amazing thing is, they were put in charge of guarding one of the most precious commodities that a farmer could have, and that was the sheep. They were put in charge of guarding them. And it wasn't like... It, it, they would take this, this flock of sheep and they would go out into the wilderness. They would go out into the desert area and they would try to find ways, places where the sheep could graze. Because, you know, there's not a whole lot of pasture land in the middle of the desert. You've got to look for it. You've got to be able to find it. And if that's not difficult enough, very often they would go out on a long distance and they would be out overnight, maybe a couple of nights. And at night, when it got dark, the shepherd would bring the sheep together and they would put them in something that's called a sheep pen. Now, when we think of sheep pens today, we think of a fenced-in area, kind of like over here in the playground, if you will. Okay, an area that was fenced in, but of course it wasn't like that in Jesus' time. What we had looks something like this, I hope. There it is. It's a wall, maybe three or four feet high, a rock wall that was built out in the middle of the desert. And if you go to Israel today, you will still see the remnants of these sheep pens. They're still there. But notice there's no gate because wood is a commodity. It's a, it's a it's a valuable commodity in Israel. And so there was no gates built on these pens. And so at night, like you see in the picture, the shepherd would literally lay down in that opening, number one, so the sheep wouldn't wander off, and number two, so that no two-footed or four-footed predators would come in after the sheep. The good shepherd literally would lay his life down for the sheep, just as Jesus laid his life down for us. In both of the Gospels, according to Matthew and Luke, the angel Gabriel also told Jesus' earthly parents that their son would be a savior. He would be a savior. Matthew wrote to Mary, or of Mary, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus is rooted in the Hebrew word Yeshua, which means to deliver or to rescue. In today's vernacular, we would use the word to say, or the words to save. Very often we heard Jesus referred to as Jesus Christ, correct? Yes? Occasionally we may read Jesus the Christ. Christ is not Jesus' last name. No matter how you hear it used in our world today, Christ is not Jesus' last name. In the scripture that Kenny read for us this morning, Kenny, thank you for the scripture and for the prayer. But in the scripture that Kenny read for us this morning, Peter responded to Jesus' question, who do you say I am, by saying you are the Messiah. Now stay with me on this because it's a little bit complicated. The title Messiah in ancient Hebrew meant anointed one. Okay, Anointed one anointed by God. Later, as these writings were uh, transferred or translated from Hebrew to Greek, the ancient Greek word Messiah was translated into, or the ancient word Messiah was translated into the modern Greek word Christos. 
from which we get the English title of Christ. The definition of anointed means to be set apart, to be empowered, to be protected. Jesus was anointed by his heavenly Father. He became the Christ. One of the boldest, I believe, statements of who Jesus is comes from the Apostle, Apostle John, where Jesus himself declared, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. One of the reasons that these words are so powerful is they are among some of the last words that Jesus shared with his disciples and shared with us today. In which he said that only by faith in him can we find the pathway back to God. Back to the truth in this world and to eternal life. Some other references to Jesus' ministry on earth use these titles. Author and perfecter of our faith. Bread of life. Bridegroom to the church. Mediator, Lamb of God, and true vine. Okay, so we've looked at Jesus' nature, we've looked at Jesus' work on earth. The last section that I want to, the last group of titles that I want to talk about have to do with Jesus' place in what we refer to as the Holy Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, in order to look at that, we need to look at the beginning as well as the end. In Genesis, in the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis begins with, in the beginning, and you know who was there in the beginning? That's right, Jesus. God and Jesus and God's Holy Spirit. And then in the book of Revelation, John reminds us that Jesus said on two occasions, John quotes him in the book of Revelation, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And for those of you that are students of Greek, because I know most of you are, you know that the word Alpha refers to the first letter in the Greek alphabet, and the word Omega refers to the, as the... Last letter. See, I knew y'all were Greek scholars. I knew y'all knew that. Jesus was with God at the time of creation. And as we will see in just a minute, he will be with him through the coming, coming ages. The first and the last. Now, when we think of the last, we think of what? We think of the last day here on earth. But Jesus is beyond that. Jesus is with us through this life and throughout eternity as well. Jesus has been, is, and will be always, just as we are all under the reign of the Trinity. Two more. Another favorite of mine is also comes from the prophecy of Isaiah, and it also comes from the writer of Matthew. Isaiah wrote about Emmanuel. Matthew wrote about Emmanuel, the Greek, the Hebrew, and the Greek. That's why sometimes in the Bible we will see it spelled with an I. Sometimes in the Bible we will see it spelled with an E. It's the same word, just a different translation. And what does the word Emmanuel mean? Think back to Christmas. It means God with us. I don't know how many people there are in here right now. I'm not going to take the time to count. 
But there's one more that we don't see. That's God. God with us. Now imagine you are living back in Jesus' time. You are living under the tyranny of not only the Roman government, but also your own religious leaders. They literally controlled every aspect of your life. You had no freedom. No freedom. Except the freedom that came from being, from knowing that you are a child of the one true God. Imagine the comfort of hearing God is with you. Of seeing this, this man who is God in human form. That's Jesus' part. That's his role, if you will, in the Trinity. And it should be the same comfort for us as believers today. Jesus is still with us. Jesus will always be with us. Jesus is Lord. In his letter to the church in Rome, the Apostle Paul wrote these words that over the ages have, come, have become something of a motto, if you will, for Christians. Chapter 10, verse 9, book of Romans, Paul wrote, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not maybe, not possibly, not could be, you will be saved saved. To be Lord refers to one who is deserving of all dignity, all honor, and all majesty. Leads me to the final passage from God's holy word that I want for us to contemplate today. In the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 it is written, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. The radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of God's being. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, in other words, after he died on the cross for you and for me, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, sat down at the right hand of his Father in heaven. And as we all know throughout reading the Bible, or as we read through the Bible, we know that the right hand in any situation is the position of, of honor uh, at meals and at celebrations. The, the honored guest always sat at the right hand of the host. The right hand is where Jesus is today. And it's where Jesus always will be. Remember in the beginning I said there were two important questions. The first one is, what do you call Jesus? The second one is simply this. Who is Jesus to you? That's what all of this is about. I've given you all of these different titles and names for Jesus. And now you have to answer the question for yourself. Who is Jesus to me? Who is Jesus to me? A lot of people in our world will say, he was a good man. Or he was a, he was a great prophet. Unfortunately, a lot more in our world today will say, who? Or Jesus was a long time ago. It's, it's, he's not relevant to my life. He's not relevant to our word. He was to, to our world. He was, he was just a man. Beloved, we will continue. Our world will continue in this nasty spiral, downward spiral that we are in. As long as the world 
considers Jesus irrelevant. It's up to us to show the world who Jesus was, more importantly, who Jesus is, and of greatest importance, who Jesus will be in each one of our lives. Who is Jesus to you? Folks, if you think this temporal world that we're in today is in trouble, and it is, imagine the eternity without Jesus Christ. If y'all can stand as you're able to sing number 203, His Name is Wonderful, all verses. Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to our world? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Declare that with your mouth and know that in your heart by faith. And you will have no reason to fear any man, any creature, anything in all of creation. I want you to take these words that you have heard this morning and I want you to go out into the world and I want you to share them with everyone that you meet. Let all know that our hope, our confidence, our joy comes from knowing that Jesus is our Lord, the Lord of our life now and the Lord of our life in the world to come. Go now in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, go and share with all today and forever. Amen. Amen.